it was revealed yesterday in a U.S. report that Syria had made limited use of chemical weapons, killing around 150 people out of the 93,000 plus that have died so far. Uh, and as expected, we are finding out now that Obama does expect to ramp up aid to the rebels in Syria, although the, the exact details of what that aid will look like are not currently available. We have a, a, few, a few articles speculating about, you know, uh, like small arms and things like that, uh, things that we would not have to send in advisors to teach them how to use. We could just arm them. Um, but that's, that's unfortunately at this point all that we really know uh, about what the, the aid will actually look like. Um, but we, we speculated yesterday actually about why this report came out, why it was revealed that the, the chemical weapons had been used. And you uh, predicted at that point that it might have less to do with new information coming up and more to do with an, a, a more updated evaluation of the military uh, situation and the fact that the rebels are losing. Um, that, that very well might be true. Salon has an article where they're speculating the same thing. And we also find out at the same time that both Syria and Russia are, of course, as you'd expect, disputing the information about the chemical weapons uh, of uh, that came out yesterday. Yes, yeah. of course. So Russia, in this case, is not to be trusted at all. Uh -huh. And they've been selling arms to the Syrians. Meanwhile, telling us, oh, let's go to Geneva and let's talk about peace. Mm -hmm. Like, send them we weapons. Yeah. Send the weapons. Let's and talk in a year. Right. <laughs> and, and that strategy has, unfortunately, totally worked. It has allowed the Syrian government to gain a significant military advantage while we didn't that, do much. That's, that's the purpose of talks, strategically. When people say, oh, they're going to talk. What you do when you talk is you dig in, you resupply. That's what they're doing. That's what they did every time. It's mm -hmm. what everybody yeah. does. So it's, it's a tough situation, a tough balancing act. Because at some point, you do have to talk, and you do have to get to peace, uh, but at the same time, Talks are often used to resupply, and it depends on who's got a strategic they're, advantage. They're not interested in talking out and getting to peace. They're interested in eliminating the opposition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, the there's no, no there's question. no goal of talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's why the rebels will often say, "What are you doing talking? There's no this talking has no sense in this case. We're not anywhere near a resolution, so they have an excellent case to make." Now, and so when the Russians say, oh, I don't think they use chemical weapons, you should dismiss that out of hand. They're, they're not convinced. They're not convinced my ass. Yeah, okay. but Syria says they didn't use it either. Oh, well, I didn't so. know that. Okay, my bad. Um, <laughs> so now, on to what America should do. Uh, yes, I, you know, as the article points out, not only did the uh, rebels l lose a key city, Kusaira, I believe, mm -hmm. we talked about yesterday, Last week. Uh, but now they're on the verge of losing Aleppo, which is much more important. And hence, we're in a bit of a panic here in the U.S. as to what we should do. But we might get to a fun disagreement. I, I don't think people in the U.S. are in a panic. Mm -hmm. No, oh, no, 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 the U.S. government. No, oh, no, okay, no, yeah, right. not the guy on Iowa. Yeah, he could not care less. I don't think he, he cares. Yeah, yeah, he's like, Aleppo? What the hell is it's Aleppo? like watching Fox News. Come yeah. on, give me an update. Come on. <laughs> What's happening in Syria, for Christ's sake? Yeah. What are you going to give me another one? Okay, all right, but let's, let's uh, talk about what we should do. You're going to say, well, as usual, nothing, right? <laughs> I, I believe, personally, I believe in the Prime Directive and that we should totally strip down the empire mm -hmm. and that we should be friends with friends and do non-military stuff. But I think if you look at the majority of our history in the last 60 years, we've reacted like somebody who has PTSD, a gun, and a bad alcohol problem when we deal with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And we need to tamp that shit down and come home. So here's an argument I'm going to lose. Okay, so let me agree with two parts of what you're saying to begin with in my losing argument. Uh, number one, I get that China has been ten times smarter about this. Like we go blow up Iraq, we lose at least a trillion dollars, we lose four to five thousand guys, thirty over thirty thousand injured, yada yada yada. Let alone the Iraqis. Yeah, and we lose the entire Middle East in terms of they hate us now, and then China comes in. Quietly afterwards, he goes, hey, can I get your oil out of this? And Iraq's like, oh, you gave me like 10 cents more? Great, here you go, right? Here's all of our oil. I mean, that well, is that's this, a million this, times better strategy. This is a bigger, more complicated thing than Obama just making it based on what's happening in Aleppo. This is real politic playing out in a strategic struggle between the Saudis and the Iranians. And also between ourselves and the Russians and the Chinese versus their new client states. I mean, if, if you want to do a World War II analogy, I would say what you're seeing with Iran is they're kind of like Spain for the great powers to play around with. Mm -hmm. the, the Chinese and the Russians have given the Iranians a lot, mm -hmm. both in terms of cyber warfare capabilities to being able to jack that drone about five or six months ago uh, and who they're arming. And for the people around there, they're thinking, okay, there's Saudi Arabia, 
They've kind of done an unofficial deal with Pakistan to get a nuke just in case the Iranians set one off. And everyone there is looking at, okay, the Russians are backing their client state to the hilt. Mm -hmm. They don't care what the world says. They don't care how many people have to die. We're looking for allies in the future. The Russians will stick by us. The Americans, the second thing gets bloody, they're going to take off and walk. Mm -hmm. And That's true. And right. that's true, but why do we want to hang out and be allies with a bunch of fucking murderers? <laughs> yeah, now, so uh, further buttress your argument. It, what they're doing is very smart strategically. It's uh, basically what we did to the Russians in Afghanistan. So big Mia Brzezinski uh, under Carter thought, hey, if I arm the Mujahideen uh, just a little bit, enough to take down a couple of Russian helicopters, the Russians will way overreact. They'll send their whole army into Afghanistan, and they'll crash their empire on the rocks of Afghanistan. So now, then Al-Qaeda took that strategy, use it against us. Mm -hmm. We just have to do a couple of big things, and it turns out they only had to do one huge mm -hmm. thing. And America will spend, and, and bin Laden would talk about this in the tapes, freely. Be like, you idiots, well, here's my plan. You're go I'm going to get you to waste all of your money trying to find me in a cave. Okay? And uh, start all these different wars that are going to ruin your empire. And unfortunately, that's kind of what we did, right? And so now the Russians and the Chinese are using the same thing. They help Iran, they mm -hmm. goad them, goad them, goad them, so that we waste all of our time and effort and et cetera But we're on doing Iran. the same thing with the Israelis and the Saudis by saying, oh, Syria's a mess. You better bring Hezbollah in to help you out. Yeah. And now they've tied up Iran and Hezbollah. And the idea is to just keep them fighting, keep sucking them dry. But what, like, we but, never pay attention to the unintended consequences is we've taken a side, once again, in a sectarian conflict in the Middle East that Americans don't know about, don't care about. Syria is not part of our sphere of influence in the world, never has been, my guess, never will be. Mm -hmm. And we don't really have that much at stake other than to make it worse so for I, everybody. So all we've done is so far given your argument uh, for not doing anything. But now let me finally turn around and why we my, should. Why we should. Uh, and it's, you know, strategically, I don't know that I can make a great case for it. But morally, I can't stand doing nothing. And maybe that makes me a bleeding heart. 93,000 dead, Assad is clearly a dictator. If he's using chemical weapons, if we don't do anything, it sends the message, you got any kind of issue, there's no cop on the beat, okay? Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. You want to butcher everybody in the country, they're have doing, at it they're all. They're doing that anyway. If you want to drop chemical, biological weapons, and murder kids, women, etc. have at it, Hoss. They've been doing and it I, for a year. Yeah. Uh, but look, we've been doing it for all of history, but we're trying to get better, yeah. right? And so and historically, we have been getting better. We have been getting better, and partly because of exactly this kind of pressure that we put on people, right? So now I'm not saying but ground troops. Ground troops is insanity. No way I would be in favor of that. It's counterproductive. It'll turn some of the Syrians against us. It'll get us in the middle of a civil war we can't possibly get out of. Going to Iran is an unbelievably bad idea for the reasons we discussed earlier, and it's totally unnecessary. But, and I know that there will be consequences and, and, and a price to pay on a no-fly zone. It's not cost-free, okay? Having said that, I would do a no-fly zone. I would arm as carefully I as I do could. do a no-fly zone? No way. Mm -hmm. you, you've got Russian ground crews with anti-aircraft weapons, so we're essentially going to be having the Russians taking pot shots at yeah. us. Yeah. And so Obama is a right. no-fly zone. That's Obama right. is not the guy that's going to risk U.S. jets being shot down in Syria. Like, you guys because are right. the thing is, a lot of people will say, look, he's been having a bad couple of weeks, all these scandals. Like, thankfully, I guess with the NSA, we've forgotten about the other scandals, the IRS and the AP and all that. Um, and so he's just trying to distract us, you know, by starting this war, getting involved in a war, which has happened historically, like, we've done that. But we don't get involved on the clearly losing side of a war to distract people. Mm -hmm. We don't arm people that could potentially be destroyed in a couple of months. I'm not saying anything about the morality of arming them. I feel the same way as you. I don't want to allow a dictator to, to maul his people or to give uh, encouragement to future dictators. But this is Obama is not the guy to do this. And if he was going to get involved, this isn't the conflict he'd do it with. You're absolutely right. Politically, you guys are right. Strategically, you're probably right. Practically, you're right. No, oh, strategically, real politic, we're wrong. Because real politic doesn't care about human beings or their lives or aspirations or anything like that. Right, no, and but I would say then don't get involved in Syria and let him kill however many people he, as, as he wants strategically, right? So not getting involved would be the correct path strategically. But I'm, what I'm saying is, if I was the president, and I think, what is the policy we should have? Mm -hmm. I would do a no-fly zone, and I would say, I know some of our shots could get, uh, just some of our jets could get shot down. I'm willing to take that risk 
because we are the good guys, okay? Hey, look. And, 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 you know, our guys, we put them in harm's way all the time. We put them in harm's way in Iraq for no goddamn reason at all, okay? Here, we're going to put them in harm's way so that instead of 150,000 people getting killed, maybe, just maybe 120,000 get killed. Yeah. Just maybe a dictator doesn't survive. Just maybe the next time a dictator thinks about using chemical or biological weapons, he says, oh, remember when the U.S. came in and dominated Hold the air? On. And when we dominate the air, it usually does have an effect. Play through the consequences if the rebels win in Syria and what's going to happen in the greater Middle East. Mm -hmm. play, play through. Think about it. What's going to happen in Lebanon? What's going to happen in Jordan? What's going to happen in Iraq? You're, you're going to increase the sectarian tensions. We all know, everybody knows, Obama knows, there will be a mass slaughter of the Alawites if they lose. That's a huge problem, yes. You know, the same way, you know, yes, they're going to be killed by Assad's forces if they lose, but we all know that's going to happen if they win. And the thing is, we won't back them to win. Mm -hmm. We're just backing them as a thorn to in Iran's the, exactly. side. It's yeah. the same, it's no, I mean, it is different, but think of like 1956 in Hungary. And we told the Hungarian people, we're going to intervene on your behalf. Rise up, we're coming in to help you. No, no, we had no intentions of doing that. So instead, a bunch of people were killed by the regime because they rose up and believed us. No different sure, than in the, the south of Iraq. There were the Kurds in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand all that, and I'm very concerned about the minority, Shiite minority, Alawite minority in Syria being butchered as the rebels win, right? Uh, but, Wes, people are getting butchered on each side, and I never believe the devil we don't know is, better than, is, is worse than the devil we do know, right? Everybody says, stick with the devil you know. I think that's the most irrational no, saying of all time. I, I do too. I know that devil, and he's a freaking devil, and I don't, <laughs> and I know he's a butcher. So, and then finally, uh, on the issue of instability in the region, well, whether Assad wins or the rebels win, we have the same instability. The Shia and the Sunni are basically at full-out war now throughout the Middle East. So it doesn't really matter who wins; that war will rage on. Yeah.